Jews have Muhammad. They are afraid that people doubt that they are Muslims. <laughs> if your name is Muhammad, you are a Muslim. You can't be anything else. Anyway, it's true, but I, I'm sure their name is like that. But I mean, I don't know. I mean, if someone's name is Muhammad Hosni Mubarak, they call him Muhammad Mubarak. Uh, don't say the second name when they go. They say Muhammad Sadat. They don't say Anwar Sadat. Muhammad Anwar Sadat. Why? Why? Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. This, I love them. I love these. These are the people I love. <laughs> God forbid the people I don't love. What I speak of. Anyway, I love these people. I do. It's true. Everybody knows I love. Anyway, I was invited to speak in this uh, uh, bowling world championship, and Mubarak told me, "Amel kida, you say a speech." to welcome the foreigners, and you say a speech uh, about us uh, uh, receiving the foreigners. So I said uh, my English speech, and then I had to say my Arabic speech, and I had been rehearsing to say Muhammad Hus Mubarak a hundred times. I was afraid to make a mistake. Say Husni Muhammad Mubarak, or you know. <laughs> I was very scared to make a mistake. It would be terrible to kill my career in Egypt. So anyway, I got through this very well, and the championship went on. And after the championship, they all had the American ambassador and the British ambassador. Everybody was there, all the ambassadors in the world, all in the world who were in Egypt. They sat in the, uh, the, 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 the Sharif uh, room where they have, uh, you know, they make the sort of salon where they put the honorary guests. And they sent an officer to tell me that I was invited in the honorary guest place. And I walked in, and there were all the ambassadors, all the generals of the Egyptian army, all the corps diplomatique of Egypt. And there was a seat which was empty between Mubarak and Suzanne, his wife. So I said, OK, this is where my place. So I sat. <laughs> they sat. I sat between Mubarak and Suzanne. And the atmosphere was very dull. You know, no one was speaking. The American ambassador was sitting there, you know, bored to, st to death. And everybody was silent. You know, they don't tell stories because they don't speak the same language. So I was trying to entertain, like I'm trying to entertain you, which is a different task, except for the fat people. I love the fat people. <laughs> Get your checkbooks out, you fat people, and pay money for our, our organization. We want money. We want to have money to continue this and to make it grow. But I'm not, that's all right. We want, we want to have the biggest organization in the United States of America. All three millions that we are, we can do it. Yes, we can do it. We just have to have the will. We have achieved things in our history, the Arabs. We have been the greatest culture in the history of the world. The Arab culture has been the greatest culture in the history of the world. When we were in Andalusia, this was the time of the greatest culture. We had all the Jews with us. All the, the great Jewish philosophers, all the Jewish people were with us there. And when Isabel Catholica made the great mistake to throw us out in 1499 or something like that, all the Jews left with us and they came to North Africa and they became the Sephardic Jews, who are the people that I like. I like Sephardic Jews because they're Arab. They like, you know, they speak Arabic. And they speak with, when they don't speak Arabic, they speak with an Arabic accent. I like that. <laughs> what was I talking about before I got to this? <laughs> huh? Ah, so I sat. Ah. How, how far is it from Mubarak and Suzanne to where I got into Andalusia? And, uh, you know, and the uh, Jewish, uh, Jewish philosophers. There were great Jewish philosophers in that time. Anyway, I sat between Mubarak and Suzanne. And I wanted to entertain the Americans and the British and, uh, you know, and all the ambassadors. And I said, fellas, I want to tell you something. 
I told them the same story I just told you. I said, you you've all got it wrong about the men and the women in Egypt and in, in the Arab world. The women are the bosses. I said, the women, when we close the door in the apartment, they rule us. And then I looked and I saw that I was sitting between Mubarak and Suzanne. <laughs> and I realized that this was a very dangerous subject of conversation. <laughs> and I said, present company excluded. <laughs> I really did. This is a true story. I never tell lies. I tell stupid stories, but ne they're never lies. They're stupid, but they're not lies. <laughs> OK, fellow. I'm not going to talk a, a long time, because you want to go and um, have a good time with your girlfriends. <laughs> I live alone. I can go to my room any you know, I can stay here and talk to you for hours. <laughs> I miss nothing. It's between. My, my choice is whether to talk to you for hours or to go to bed by myself. I don't know. It's the same thing. I, mean, I can talk for you. <laughs> it's more fun to talk to you than to go to bed by myself. But I chose. I chose to like to go to bed by myself because I culture myself. I cultivate my knowledge. When I was younger, I used to take a book. I used to take Proust, A la recherche du temps perdu, and great books, and read. And in the middle of the chapter, I used to think of a pretty girl. <laughs> and I used to take the phone and say, hi, darling, what are you doing? Are you busy? Why don't why don't we meet to you know have a little bit of fun and all that? I never finished a chapter when I was young. <laughs> and now I'm so happy. I can read the whole book from cover to cover. <laughs> I have the greatest culture of any Arab in the world, and also of any Jew in the world, also. I have great culture because I read books every night. I read the whole book from the beginning to the end without another thought except to cultivate myself. I love you girls. You're all gorgeous. I love, I don't envy any of your husbands. Your husbands do not hate me anymore like they used to before. <laughs> now they love me because they say the guy's innocuous. He's not, no, no danger, uh, you know. But, you know, men should be careful. Not of me. me I, am, I can guarantee you that I'm no danger. I don't know. Trust me. Trust me, I never lie. I have never lied in my life. <laughs> but husbands must be very careful because women are very treacherous, beautiful women. I'm not warning you about something bad. I'm just saying to you, be careful. You don't just take it for granted that she loves you. Yeah, she loves you. I'm sure she loves you. But try and make her love you more. <laughs> Give her a little more love more attention, more gifts. Uh, no, gifts, no. Not money, no, no, no. Gifts of love. Remember her wedding anniversary. Remember her birthday. Don't forget ever, ever, ever. The day you forget her birthday or her anniversary, you're dead, you're out, you're out. Not you, no, 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 not you, guys. Not the fat guys, the fat guys. <laughs> The thin guys, because the thin guys think they've got it all made. See, I used to be fat a bit a, a few years ago, because I became old. And then I became a thin only because I became old. I became thin out of oldness. This is another, a new way of becoming thin. <laughs> Anyone who wants to die, just get old. You'll get thin. You, know, you don't have to diet and not eat. Just, just get old, you'll get thin. You know. You can't be fat and old. God, God has made a rules 
not to give us all the disasters in the world. You know, the rich countries have cold weather, and the poor countries have hot weather. They have the sunshine, they have the blue sky. God is just. And so, if you're old, you're thin. And if you're young, you're fat. It, uh, the Arab men are fat, because they eat too much. Because, you know, in my country, in Egypt, the dream, we are a country which, which was marked by hunger. It's atavistic, you know, that hunger was our history. The ancient Egyptians were hungry. Everybody was hungry. The Arabs were always hungry people. <laughs> and when they make some money, the first thing they want to do is eat meat. <laughs> meat is the sign of being a little richer. So in my country, they eat kofta and kebab. <laughs> this is the first step from fool and ta'amiya. <laughs> yeah, the first, the first you eat fool and ta'amiya, and then you become a little rich and you eat kofta and kebab. Okay? And then you become richer. And when you become richer, you eat filet mignon. Well cooked. The Arabs don't like it, uh, senor, although it's the only way to eat meat. I mean, I'm not going to discuss this with you guys, because you don't like to see blood on your plate. But uh, Anyway, you like to see blood elsewhere, but not on your plate. But I know. <laughs> and it's, it, meat is, is a thing atavistic. We have a history on God. And when we become rich, even if our great-grandfather was rich, if we're a fourth generation rich, we want to eat meat. Because food is what we have in our history. We don't have, we, we were always hungry people. Not, not you. <laughs> us. 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 Not American Arabs. Arabs, especially two second generation, they're okay. First generation, it takes a long time to before, before you can eat some good meat. Listen, fellow, help us become a huge organization. But please, I'm, I'm speaking seriously because I love this, this ADC. I want this ADC to spread all over the world. I don't want it only in America. I want it in France. We have five million Muslims in France. Arabs, Muslims, doesn't matter. Mo Arabs. And we need to help them because they are maltreated. We have millions and millions of Arabs all over the world, in England. And we need to have an ADC in England. We need to have an ADC in France. We need to have an ADC in Italy. We need to have an ADC in Spain. We need to have an ADC everywhere. But first of all in America, because it all starts here and it ends here. We are the responsible people for our community. Our community is not just you and me and you and you and you over there at the end. Our community is all the Arab Americans in America. I want them all to share in this ADC. I want them all to help us, all to join us. And I will be, I will join the ADC, and I want to have a, an important post in the ADC. I don't want to be just a, an honorary guest who comes to speak now and then. I want to belong to this company because they represent my family. You are my family. I love you. I love you so much. I can't, love you. I can't love you individually. I wish I could love you individually. I can see a couple of beautiful girls, but I've <laughs> okay. No. I've, I've also see ugly men, but you know, I, I, I can love them too, the ugly men, as long as they get the checkbook out and write a check for us here. Let us be as strong as the other. Uh, communities, <laughs> which I will not name them by name, because I'm not against them. I'm against no one. 
as I said to my son when he became an actor, uh, when he, did, he didn't become an actor, he wanted to. I, but I said to my son, one advice I will give you, never ask a girl her nationality nor her religion before you kiss her. And so this idiot son of mine, <laughs> he married the Jewish girl, then he married a Catholic girl, and now he's married to a Muslim girl finally. So, I mean, he, he just totally believed, he didn't do it on purpose. It's just that he, he loved these girls, they were pretty, so he kissed them. And then he found that she was a Jew. And then he found a Catholic. That, that was good. I like it. I'm pleased. I have two grandsons. The people will, will criticize me about this. One's, his mother is Jewish. My son divorced when the boy was one year old. And we couldn't get custody because it was in Canada. They were Canadian. She got custody and she, he was brought up in his mother's family. And he became very, you know, following her, his mother's religion. But I got him every year to come to Egypt. I told Fatin, my, who is his grandmother too, Fatin Hammam is the grandmother of Omar. <laughs> his name is Omar Sharif. My, that my, great gra my grandson, who is the oldest one, is Omar, of course. And so he came to Egypt and I told him, look, love us. Look how we are nice, we are kind. Because he had ideas that we were terrible. He used to tell me uh, how we, what we did in the Six Day War, we screwed you pretty good. I said, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> My own grandson said to me, I said, are you crazy? Are you talking to your grandfather? I mean, I'll kill you. I'll kill you right now. <laughs> My grandson. I said, I said to him, what's your name? He said, Omar Tare Sharif. That Omar Tare Sharif, that's not a Jewish name. That sounds like an Arabic name, Muslim name to me. He said, yes, but I mean, you know, but my mother, I said, your mother, and your, what about your father? What about your grandfather? Who spoils you? I spoiled him rotten and fatten. I told fatten, spoil him rotten. When he comes to Egypt, make him have the best time in his life. Take him to the best places, all the, the joy that he can have. And he became now, gradually, he is with us. <laughs> I can't tell you to what extent, but at least to some extent, he is with us. Okay, fellows, I love you all. Keep encouraging this ADC. We love it. I love it. I'm going to be the main, I'm going to become the president of ADC. <laughs> I, who's the president? Okay, I'm now telling the president, leave me your place. I love Jim. Okay, whoever, I'm going to become one of the main partners of ADC. And I'm gonna come every now and then to check on you fat guys, <laughs> that you get your checkbooks out and pay money because we need money, unfortunately. If it were only a question of love, we would be the greatest <laughs> society in the world. We have love to give and to spare and to spend as much as no one in the world. But money, we need the fat guys. <laughs> Let me see, oh, no, there are too many thin guys. You Arabs used to be fat, now they've become thin. That's what I don't like. <laughs> Take care, fellas. I love you all.